I'm very happy to be here to join you to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the creation of the Akachi District Assembly, which was part originally of the then Ketu District. I congratulate the chiefs, elders, opinion leaders, and successive district chief executives and members of the assembly for the work done in growing and strengthening the assembly. Delivering on government's agenda should also mean that you pay particular attention and help in the effective delivery of our flagship programs such as the free SHS, planting for food and jobs, and the IPED which is providing the equivalent of $1 million per constituency to finance capital expenditure for infrastructure and other facilities in the localities. The One Village, One Dam and One District, One Factory policy initiatives, like all the other innovative introductions to the economy, are all very much local initiatives, so they must interest you. The challenge is very much for the assemblies to take advantage of these programs to bring change to your districts. Dogma Chairperson, it is now some 31 years that the district assembly concept was introduced into our country. It is one of the most important contributions of the Rawlins era. It has led to the enhancement of participatory involvement of our people in their local governance. Now it is time to deepen the process that was begun 31 years ago and entrust to the people full sovereignty over the election and of the district chief executives and members of the district assemblies. Already the district assemblies are elected, the members are elected directly by the people. But they're done in a non-partisan way, allegedly non-partisan. All of us know that it is not non-partisan, that the political parties are deeply involved. It was not so long ago that the general secretary of one of the major political parties told us that the control that his party had won in various assemblies across the country meant that the party was on its way to victory at the center. So we all know that the district assembly elections have ceased to be nonpartisan a long time ago. It is time to strip the veneer of nonpartisan away and look at the reality, which is that they are multi party and they are partisan. So we want to bring the democracy at the, the national level, at the local level, a step further and entrust to the people the right to select directly themselves their district chief executives as well as their members of parliament and do so in an open, transparent and partisan, multi-party basis. The obstacle to this development is Article 55.3 of the Constitution, which prohibits people, parties from sponsoring candidates into local government. It is time we moved our democracy on and we removed this restriction. And that is why the parliament, together with the executive, we've gone through the motions and the processes necessary for us to do so. And we will do so on the 17th of December, when the referendum is held, along with the district assembly elections, to decide whether or not we should move one step further in the consolidation of democracy in our country. The time has come for us to move forward and bring greater and more effective progress to our country. So I'm asking all of you, on the 17th of December, when you go to vote for the district, uh, for your members of your district assembly, to also vote in the referendum. Support the initiative that the government has taken to bring greater and greater control over local government to the people in the area. No longer do you have to complain 
how come the president has brought us this man we don't like or this man we don't know now you can choose for yourself directly the man or woman you want as your district chief executive no president is going to be involved anymore I, I have the power, I say, I'm giving you the power. You choose and relieve me of the burden. You choose. I want you to be the ones to make the decision for yourselves. Yesterday, my predecessor, the former president, Mahama, said that God brought the MPP government so that Ghanaians can appreciate the NDC. So, hey, so Ghanaians want stagnation, not progress. They want high inflation, not low inflation. Ghanaians want the Unemployed Graduates Association. They don't want NAPCO. They want a poor agriculture, not plowing for food and jobs. No new industries, rather than one district, one factory. Every year, 100,000 on the average. JHS students, when he was in office, could not find a place in secondary school and had to go home because their parents could not afford it. Ghanaians prefer to go back to that and not free SHS. The people who are asleep, who are asleep, when they were in the comfortable lead, only to wake up to find that the country had rejected them, they are still asleep. They will not wake up and see that Ghana has moved on. We are moving on to a new era of hope and progress in our country. We have a leader who has no record he can defend, who has no prescriptions for the future, no policies for the future. We have never had any policy coming from this leader about what is going to happen in the future under him. Negativity, negativity, negativity. That's all we hear. Ghanaians have moved on. God, God is not so wicked as to punish Ghanaians again with the, the rule of John Mahama and the National Democratic Congress. That is not what God is going to do. Ghana has moved on. And we are now in an era of hope and an era of progress. And we're going to march on. Next year, the people who are still asleep are going to get another big joke with an impending victory of the MPP. Bankrupt record, bankrupt future, that is what we have under this leader. Our country, we're not turning back. We are not turning back to the past of stagnation and no achievement. We are going to go forward. We're marching forward.